Hey everyone, Adrian Everhart, your feminine energy dating relationship and lifestyle coach. Now, as you know, I teach you wonderful women, or if you identify yourself as a woman, I teach you how to connect with your natural feminine energy because this balances the masculine energy with a man. So this is about balancing polarities. This is about connecting to your partner so that there is this equal exchange in the relationship that feels natural. Problems get solved very natural. Love is natural and flowing. The relationship has a certain amount of ease to it. And just real quick, this isn't about being submissive or letting go of your boundaries or the things you really want in life. But in this episode, I want to talk about connecting with a man. Really, feminine energy is how you connect with a man. And it's how you connect with everyone, most importantly, yourself. So in this episode, I really want to focus on what it means to connect with a man. Now, I talk about this in my ebook, 500 Ways to Talk to a Man. I talk about how your words and finding what you feel in your body is the answer to connecting with a man. Because at the end of the day, what makes a man choose you is that he feels connected to you, bonded to you. He feels on a gut level that you really, really get him like no other woman. And he really can't imagine his life without you. You make his life better. And when you are able to connect to that part of yourself, that you know what you're feeling inside and you can speak it, but you can also connect with what the man is feeling and experiencing, then you hit gold. Now, this is not a guarantee that once you really practice connecting with your body, connecting with yourself, that you will connect with any man that happens to take you on a date or the man in front of you who has been postponing getting engaged or commitment, he's suddenly going to come around. But what it will do is two things. It's going to give you the absolute best chances with this man. If anything is holding you back in the relationship, When you discover how to connect to your body and drop down into what you're feeling and speak this in an honest, authentic way, and you can also be there in that same way with the man who's in front of you, your kids, your parents, your pet, this is where you really hit this gold and you move up a tier. And I'd always talk about the tears or these steps we're going up. You're crossing this bridge to your happily ever after. And you're taking these steps that move you higher and higher. So you're practicing this. And you're getting in touch with yourself. And you're learning something you otherwise would not have learned if the man wasn't in front of you. So this gorgeous guy that you want, you got to have him. He's here. And he's getting you to a place emotionally mentally, physically, spiritually, you name it. This guy is transforming you. So even if you don't connect with him, you're still moving up a tier. Now, the other thing it gives you is that you really find this new sense of balance in your life where otherwise you've been in your masculine energy and you've been hopping over your experiences in life. You've been noticing that you feel something and having a good cry about it and processing it. In fact, a lot of people write me emails and messages and they say, you know, I was in therapy and I was in counseling or I am a therapist (laughs) or I am a counselor and I've for years, I haven't been able to do this for my clients and I haven't been able to do this for myself. And it's because you're finding what you feel and you're talking about it. And we think that that's enough. And let me tell you, it's a great start. You're at a starting place where you can finally talk about it. You can step outside of yourself and say, wow, I went through this experience and I was really nervous. I was devastated. I was scared. I felt so helpless. You're able to identify that word, but are you really able to sense in your body the feeling? Because our bodies are these magnificent little muscle memory machines and they don't forget a thing. (laughs) They don't forget a thing. There are a lot of great techniques to help with this. There's EFT tapping. There's EMDR. There's a lot of therapies out there. But if you can learn how to find that sensation in your body and get used to feeling what this energetic machine you're in is sensing and feeling, 
Then you go to this new place. You move up a tier with yourself in your body where the mind and the senses are similar, still doing the same thing, but you're on a new level with your body. You're in a place where you're deeper with your body. Now, when you get deeper with your body, it's like you're a beacon of light for men. Men will just be drawn to this because their whole lives, they've been told, don't cry, don't complain. You got to fix this. You got to man up. They've been taught to not get in touch with their feminine energy, to not really be aware of how they feel. And in some cases, this might work for men. (laughs) They do a lot of uncomfortable things that I would never, ever want to do. I always talk about the guys that are digging the ditches and setting up the, (laughs) you know, the infrastructures along these busy highways. You will not find me out there doing that. I am not emotionally equipped to do a job like this. Nor do I want to get up and answer the door when someone comes knocking at 2 a.m. This is not in my DNA. This is not what I want to do. So on a lot of levels, the reason a man is drawn to you and connects to you is because you are this feeling body. You are capable of knowing what is going on inside of your body and feeling it. So let's go a little deeper A lot of women, when they're first discovering their natural feminine energy and they're going on dates or they're trying to connect with their partner, they find that they're actually up in their head and there's a lot of chatter and they're thinking things like, oh, I should say this now and I should, you know, tilt my head and smile and I should, I should listen to him and make sure he gets what he wants. We're in this kind of people pleasing mode of masculine energy where we believe we have to do something to get the partner or man to love and appreciate us and like us. So this is a confusing thing to get out of because a lot of us, we've grown up watching our moms or our grandmas and they are the caretakers of men. So there are all these generations of women ahead of us who their survival was dependent upon being nice to a man. You were incredibly fortunate if you found a very nice and generous man. All you have to do is read a Jane Austen novel to understand that. But more so, women had to give to get. You had to, for your survival, be nice to men. So that's not really the case anymore. And then things kind of did a 180 and women became, you know, more independent in some really powerful and wonderful ways. But it backfired. Our divorce rates went sky high, got a little misaligned with our energies. So this is about recognizing the strengths that that masculine energy has, but also understanding like on some level, I need and desire this other energy in my life. So we end up being in our heads trying to figure out How do I get that energy in my life? How do I get that man in my life? How do I create this relationship with him? So we're trying to think it through. We're trying to solve it. And we try to find words or clothes or actions that make this happen. And that is not what connects a man to you. And if it does connect a man with you, it might be the wrong type of guy. Because he's going to be more in his feminine energy looking for someone to do and take care of him and things like this. Don't get me wrong. There are elements of this in a relationship. My husband got stung by a bee recently. And um, I was absolutely there to help take care of him. You know, even though it was something minor, it turned into something big. So it's about a balance. But when it comes to connecting, building that long-term deep connection, I want you to ask yourself, am I really worried about the outcome of this conversation? Am I controlling where this conversation goes? For example, after he has this conversation with me, he's going to feel more in love with me. After we go on this date, after we have this weekend together, after we have this conversation, he's going to understand. So I want you to think if you're looking for an outcome, and for those of you who are out in the dating world, are you just nervous? Are you really nervous and you're up in your head going, hey, I'm a smart lady. I can figure this out. All I know is I was nervous about my math test. So I studied and I I figured everything out and I wasn't nervous anymore because I knew my stuff. That's how I learned confidence. It doesn't work with a man. It just does not. So 
Are you nervous? Are you seeking an outcome? And are you first well-practiced in finding what you're feeling in your body yourself? I will tell you personally, I was very nervous around high value quality men who were masculine energy men. I was nervous around them and I would sabotage it every time. I would seek out feminine energy men. I would seek out men with problems that I could fix and tinker with and they could become my little project. I was not drawn to or attracted to men who already had their life together and knew what they wanted because that scared me. That scared me. I didn't know how to talk to that. I didn't know how to just receive and be a woman. I wanted the guy that had the problems that I could help fix and I could somehow be part of his life. And, and even if I met a guy and he didn't have problems, I would find his problems. I would figure out how to fix them. He would become my little project because I was stuck in my masculine energy. I didn't want to be in my body. So I was overextending myself. I was overfunctioning. And a lot of you moms that if you're listening to this podcast, there are so many moms out there that are overfunctioning with their kids and even their spouse. I have a popular blog where I talk about how I was in a cafe and a mom was just in all the conversations of her kids, like just controlling and tuning and dialing and making these adjustments to each of their conversations, each of their desires, interrupting them. And all she needed to do was just breathe and listen and let them say what they want to say. It's a lot of the same thing with men. Just let them say what they want to say. How you respond has a lot to do with what they're going to do or not do. Because with a man, if you try to control that outcome, what's he going to do? He's going to dig his heels in. You're going to feel a resistance like you've never felt before. Or he will go along with it, but he is counting the days to when he walks away or he'll be moody and he'll be pessimistic and he'll hold it against you. So nothing positive is gained through force. This is not how we connect. So as you're processing and thinking about Am I looking for an outcome? Am I trying to control the outcome? Am I just really nervous? Or do I, for some reason, I don't feel confident enough to connect with someone. No one's going to be interested in me. This isn't about faking or feigning interest in a man. It's really about listening and sensing what you feel in your body. So a technique that helped me was when a person is speaking to me, I imagine the details of what's going on in their story playing out like a little bit of a television show right above their head. And if they're over the phone with me, I imagine it just before me on a screen. And really look at the details of what is happening to them and see the emotion on their face and try to listen without rushing to your own conclusion, finding the words you want to say next. And really just be there and give them that space. Can you give them that space to feel how they feel? Tell you about their experience. There's nothing urgent that needs to be fixed or solved. Just give them that space to be who they are and share their story with no judgment. Practice this. See how long you can go in a conversation before you immediately jump into taking notes and coming up with how you're going to solve it, fix it, or what you want to say next, or even empathizing. I recently watched two friends talking, and one of them had had a pretty rough experience recently with losing a pet. And the other person just kept interrupting her while she was sharing, going, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. And she was rushing along, getting through the grieving process because she was uncomfortable with that conversation. But if she could have just stood there and just encircled that person in love or light, and I know it's difficult sometimes, but put that bubble around you. You're in your own little bubble. They are in their own little bubble. This is a great way to have boundaries. You can still connect with a person, even if they're going through a difficult time that you're not really comfortable hearing. In addition to letting their story play out in your mind, And you're able to connect and see what they're experiencing. I want you to also look at that person's face. And again, if that person isn't in front of you, 
I want you to just imagine what their face must look like. And I want you to name one emotion you see. And this is my really, really get him tool. Where if the man is telling you how he feels about something, you can look at his face and go, oh my gosh, you must have felt so angry. You will either get it right or you will get it wrong. And the man will tell you. And if you get it wrong, excellent. Because now you're connecting. Right or wrong, you're connecting. But if you get it wrong, and he goes, well, I wasn't angry. I was just uh, a little tired. You know, let him correct you. And go, oh, okay, okay, and be there with him. When you empathize with that person and say, oh my goodness, you must have been feeling so whatever it is, only name one emotion. You're not here to diagnose them or fix them or write a thesis on what they're going through that day. You're just here to name one emotion and be there with them and give them that space. So let's go back to talking a little bit more about connecting with what you feel in your body. Because nervousness is something I think we can all recognize and feel even if we think we're feeling something else. I used to think boredom was what I was feeling and I was really actually nervous because I wasn't in control of the conversation and I didn't know how to relax and just let the conversation flow. So if you find your mind racing with things like this, I want you to use a grounding technique that really helps me Because this grounding technique is all about getting you back into the moment instead of being upstairs in your head where your thoughts are just swirling. Over time, the more you practice this, the better you'll get at it. The less your head will be spinning whenever you have a conversation with anyone. So if you're on a date with a guy, I want you to just touch the side of your chair or touch the hem of your skirt or your blouse and just feel that texture and find what it feels like. Just name one thing, you know, is it silky? Is it smooth? Is it cool? Is it sticky? What does it feel like? And just get yourself back to that person and be able to look them in the eyes and again, nod and listen and breathe. One of the best things you can do, don't get angry at yourself, no judgment, You're not doing anything wrong. Give yourself a little love and take a few deep breaths. Calm yourself down. This is really going to get you, again, out of that loop of masculine energy where your boy is like, "Uh uh-uh, move over. I'm driving this car. And your girl starts to panic inside. And we want her to calmly and with love for herself, take a few breaths and go, I got this. I want you to be able to trust that you have got this. And how do you do that? You've got to practice. You've got to practice believing in yourself and trusting in yourself. So before you go on that date, before you have that conversation with this man, this practice, this work begins and ends with you. So right now with me on this podcast, I want you to just take a couple of deep breaths Roll your shoulders back. And I want you to see if you can't feel something in your body, whether it's pain or a tingling or a vibration or coolness. And just pick it out wherever it is in your body. And I want you to put your hand on that part. And say, I feel, or I sense. So right now for me, I have an ongoing scapula problem that I'm working with. I can put my hand on that part of my shoulder and just say, I feel an ache. And we're not judging it as right or wrong. But just acknowledge what you're feeling there. I feel whatever it is. And then I want you to say, I love the part of me that feels this way. My body is speaking to me. I love the part of me that is feeling this way. I hear you, my body. And just sit with it for a moment. Let it be there. Make friends with it. It's part of you. Okay? Relax your hand. 
Take another deep breath. And just see what has changed in your body, if anything. Maybe if you had a little bit of a pain or discomfort, it lessened. Maybe it changed form. And just observe this. So if you can incorporate this practice into your daily life a couple of times a day, you're moving up the tiers. You're getting in touch with your body. And if you happen to have a painful memory, you have to make a decision. You're confused about something. You're not sure what you're feeling. Slow down. Take those breaths. Ask yourself, what am I really feeling? And usually your brain will try and give you a quick answer. So go ahead and listen, but then ask one more time. Okay, body, I hear you. What else am I really feeling? So when you find what you're feeling in your body, again, a man is drawn to this. He connects with this. So his words, he's talking to you. He's speaking to you. You're having feelings inside of you. You may feel worried. You may feel scared. You may feel anxious. You may feel curious. Whatever it is, ride it out. Ride it out. Find out where it is in your body. It doesn't mean you have to take action on it. It doesn't mean you have to solve it or fix it. You can just sit there with it in your body and feel it through. Give it space. Don't judge it. Make friends with it. Love all parts of you and just see if you can't get to this new place with your body. So going back to working with psychologists and therapists about trauma stored in your body, there is more than just the experience itself and recalling the experience. There is the physical impact, the energy of that experience that's in your body. So for those of you who have experienced trauma, what is it that you still feel in your body? And can you just notice that part of you? Can you put your hand on it and love it? Love that part of you and know that as an adult, you're here to take care of yourself and that you got this. You're the adult. You're in charge. When you trust yourself and you can connect with yourself and you can listen to your body You can trust and connect to a man. You can also listen for when you shouldn't be trusting or connecting with a particular man. This is an excellent practice to bring into your daily life, and I hope that it helps you. This is all about being authentically you and feeling safe to open up and show and share with a man that lovely red beating heart you have. Again, men are in that masculine energy world. They don't get to experience this. And that's one of the reasons they're so drawn to women. They want to know what's going on inside of our bodies. They love to soothe it, experience it, make it better, be there for it. All right, everybody. If this podcast has helped you, you might want to check out my ebook, 500 Ways to Talk to a Man. And I also have a complete collection of all my programs that you can get for one low price. All right, much love to you and I'll see you next week.